Cortisol is much more than just a stress hormone. It plays a role in almost every system in your body, from your sleep cycle to your energy levels to your immune system. It's what helps you wake up in the morning, stay focused during the day, and handle pressure when life throws your curveball. But when cortisol gets out of balance, whether it's too high, too low, or just completely upside down, it can leave you feeling exhausted, weird, and anxious. In this video, we're breaking down everything you need to know about cortisol, so how it's made, what it does, how to test it correctly, and what your levels are really telling you. So if you're dealing with burnout, chronic fatigue, or other things that might be related to cortisol, this will give you a practical roadmap to understand your body and your stress response. Okay, so to start off, what exactly is cortisol and how is it produced? It's a steroid hormone produced by your adrenal glands which sit atop of your kidneys like little hats. These glands are part of your endocrine system and are involved in producing several important hormones, not just cortisol. Here's how this works. It all starts in the brain, specifically the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus sends a signal called CRH, corticotropin releasing hormone, to the pituitary gland. It then releases ACTH, so adrenocorticotropic hormone, which travels through your bloodstream to the adrenal glands. And then the adrenal glands respond by producing and releasing cortisol. This chain of command is called your HPA axis, so hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. It's your body's central stress response system, and when something stressful happens, like a trigger that makes you feel anxious, then your brain tells your body to pump out cortisol through the process that I just explained. But keep in mind that cortisol is not just a stress hormone. It also helps regulate blood sugar and pressure, metabolism, inflammation, and your sleep-wake cycle. So in small amounts and at the right times, it's absolutely essential for life. In healthy people, cortisol follows a natural daily rhythm, what's called a diurnal curve. It's high in the morning and then gradually decreases throughout the day. Here's the general pattern. First, we have the morning, so around 30 minutes after waking up. This is when cortisol peaks. It helps you feel alert and ready to take on the day. Then, around midday, your levels will start to drop. And in the afternoon to evening, cortisol continues to fall. And then at night, it will be at its lowest point, which allows you to relax and sleep. This rhythm helps set your body's clock. It works together with melatonin, the sleep hormone, which has an opposite curve, so low in the morning and then high at night. This is why getting natural sunlight in the morning and avoiding bright screens at night is so important. It supports this natural cortisol-melatonin rhythm. Now let's talk about how cortisol relates to burnout, which is probably what you're interested in. When you're under acute stress, like getting caught off in traffic or arguing with someone, then your cortisol will spike very quickly. That's totally normal. It gives you the energy and focus that you need to deal with the situation. But when you're under chronic stress, so from work, relationships, poor sleep, or emotional trauma, then your cortisol system can start to malfunction. Here's what can happen over time. In stage one, you will have high cortisol. This is in the early phases of stress. So your cortisol will be consistently elevated. You might feel anxious, wired and tired, have trouble sleeping, or crave sugar and caffeine. Then in stage two, you have dysregulation. So your cortisol rhythm becomes erratic. It might be high at night and low in the morning. This is when you start to feel really off. So tired in the morning, restless at night, energy crashes during the day. And then stage three is low cortisol. So after long periods of stress, then the system will downregulate. Your adrenal glands stop pumping out as much cortisol as they used to. And this would be the exhaustion or burnout stage. You feel very drained, cannot handle stress anymore, have brain fog, low blood pressure, and maybe even depression. This whole process is sometimes referred to as adrenal fatigue, even though the term is very controversial. What's clear is that chronic stress definitely takes a big toll on your HPA axis, so the whole brain-adrenal connection that we talked about before. Now, if you suspect something's off with your cortisol, you can test it. And there are several ways to do this, and each one gives you different kinds of information. Let's now look at the main options, and number one would be blood tests. This is the most common type of cortisol test, and it's usually done in the morning, typically around 8 a.m., when cortisol levels are expected to be at their highest point. 
Some doctors may also take a second sample later in the day to see if levels drop as expected. The pros of this test are that it's widely available, relatively inexpensive and easy to order through most healthcare providers. It's useful for catching extreme highs or lows in your cortisol levels, which could point to serious conditions like Addison's disease. The biggest downside is that it only provides a single snapshot in time. Cortisol fluctuates throughout the day, as you just learned, so one reading probably won't reflect your overall pattern or rhythm. It can also be skewed if you're nervous, rushed, or just feel stressed from the day. The next option would be a saliva test. This test measures free bioavailable cortisol, so the active form that your body can use. It will usually be measured at four different times during the day, typically upon waking, before lunch, before dinner, and before bed. This gives you a map of your daily cortisol rhythm. The pros are that it's non-invasive, so you just spit into a tube basically, and you can collect the samples at home without having to go to a specific clinic. It's especially helpful for spotting issues with your daily cortisol curve, like a flip pattern, so high at night and low in the morning, or a flat line where it's consistently low all day. It's a very popular choice in functional medicine, so you will see it a lot with functional practitioners. The cons are that it is sensitive to outside factors like food, caffeine, brushing your teeth, or emotional stress during the test window, and results also depend on how strictly you follow the instructions. But generally, if you do follow the instructions, then it's more reliable than blood testing in my experience. And the last option would be urine testing. This method measures cortisol metabolites over a full 24 hour period. It can be done using a traditional 24 hour urine collection or through dried urine samples that are collected at specific times of the day. It often includes other hormone markers as well. And the pros are that it gives you a broader picture. So not just your current cortisol levels, but also how your body is processing and metabolizing cortisol throughout the day. Like I said before, many tests also include related hormones like estrogen, progesterone, or testosterone, which can give you a deeper insight into overall hormonal balance. The cons are that it's more expensive than blood or saliva testing, and it isn't available at every lab. It requires a bit more effort and usually has to be ordered through a specific provider or a specialized lab. For basic cortisol screening, it could also be more information than you might need. But for complex or chronic issues, it can definitely be helpful. Okay, now let's assume you have your results and you want to interpret them. What does it mean if your cortisol is high, too low, or totally upside down? Like I said before, high cortisol levels often show up in the early stages of stress. And here common symptoms would be anxiety, insomnia, feeling tired but wired, maybe even weight gain, especially belly fat, and high blood pressure. Possible causes would be chronic stress, overtraining, poor sleep, inflammation, and even specific medications, or in rare cases, tumors. Low cortisol can happen after long-term stress when the HPA axis starts to shut down. Here common symptoms would be chronic fatigue, very low motivation, brain fog, low blood pressure, very poor stress tolerance, maybe even depression. And the possible causes are obviously burnout, chronic illness, infections, PTSD, or in rare cases, Addison's disease. So a complete shutdown of the adrenal glands. An inverted cortisol curve means that your daily rhythm is flipped. For example, your cortisol might be low in the morning when it should be high and high at night when it should be low. Here, common symptoms would be difficulty waking up, brain fog until the morning, crashing in the afternoon, but then feeling wired and anxious at night, and also trouble falling asleep, which is very common. And possible causes here could be shift work, jet lag, poor sleep habits, chronic stress, blue light exposure at night, and adrenal dysregulation. This inverted curve is especially important to fix because it can lead to a vicious cycle where poor sleep causes more cortisol issues, which causes more fatigue, which then affects your sleep even more. Okay, so to wrap up this video, I have to say that cortisol is one of the most misunderstood hormones out there. Yes, it is a stress hormone, but it's also key for your metabolism, blood sugar, immune function, and mental clarity. If you're struggling with things like fatigue, stress, anxiety, or sleep issues, then testing your cortisol can definitely give you helpful clues of what's going on. And for most people, I would probably recommend the saliva test as the first option. 
What you have to understand though is that no matter the result, the cure will pretty much always be the same. Reduce chronic stress, improve your nutrition, and work on your circadian rhythm. What I'm trying to say is that many people obsess over their specific cortisol pattern and try to optimize for it when it often makes more sense to keep an eye on the bigger picture. Also, if you're stuck in your recovery, it can often make sense to look at other areas that also need to be worked on and the downstream effects that have popped up over the years from the chronic stress. This not only includes overworked adrenals, but also an overly sensitive nervous system, a sluggish liver, and maybe thyroid issues or nutrient deficiencies. I have a bunch of videos on all of these topics on my channel and will link the most important ones in the description. Also, if you feel like you need a more guided protocol, make sure to check out my recovery program. It's a step-by-step -step system that includes diet, supplements, nervous system support, and more. It helps you avoid the most common mistakes that can set people back years and will help you get your energy back without unnecessary side effects. For more info, just open the description. It will be listed under my programs.